Hi everyone, um, hope you're doing okay. It's uh, Christmas Eve, so I thought I'd uh, make a quick video to wish you all a happy Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate and a uh, good and prosperous new year. And I thought we'd have a, a, a quick look back at 2021, for me anyway. Um, I know you've been following the videos. Um, and maybe, you know, just quickly go into some of my plans for the next year and I've got a few questions. Um, so 2021 for me, as you, you know, same as everyone else, coming out of a lockdown um, over coronavirus. Um, it's been challenging, I think, for everyone. Uh, been a bit weird. I've not had the opportunities to go out in the boat as much as I would like between early early on in the year limits on social distancing and ports and harbours not you know allowing visitors um, to just the general ability to get parts and stuff as time has gone on in the year and then obviously my workload towards Christmas and Black Friday has uh, jumped up through the roof so whilst we've had quite a few good days out they have literally just been one days we've not really had the chance to um, to go further afield um, so it's been a it's been an interesting year it's still a learning curve um, there's no doubt you've seen through the videos a lot of things I jump into them without knowing fully what to do so um, yeah, it, it's been interesting, but I've enjoyed myself. Um, so the first full year of having a boat, you know, from the winter all the way through to the, the following winter, because the year before, 2020, was the year I got the boat and I got it in the middle of the year. Um, so it's been the first year that I've had to deal with many of the things that are associated with keeping a boat, uh, maintaining it, running it, prepping it for winter, etc. Um, so yeah, it's been, a, it's been an interesting year. Um, it has confirmed that I've enjoyed um, boating and actually buying a boat was a great idea. Um, I was a little bit concerned but we'll, you know, when I first bought a boat we probably make a stupid idea. Uh, but we'll touch on that shortly. Um, so yeah, 2021, not being bad, not being brilliant, not being bad. Um, 2022, unfortunately, there's no doubt everyone uh, watching the news um, hears, is, is, you know, looking like Countries, particularly in Europe, are going into lockdown again. Um, Wales and Scotland, I believe, have got mini lockdowns, um, or at least certainly forcing uh, pubs and nightclubs, stuff like that, to uh, close. Whether we agree or disagree with that, not the point of this video. The whole point is that kind of normal life is disrupted. Um, so what that happened, or how that impacts those of us in England, uh, or those of us wishing to travel, um, I'll come back to that in a bit why um, you know we'll have to we'll have to wait and see um, I can't predict the future I don't think anyone could and if anyone could then just be very wealthy um, you know so uh, we'll just another year playing it by year the one thing that this year has taught me though um, is that I want a bigger boat not massively bigger um, I would really like something massively bigger because I absolutely adore the Princess uh, S65 series. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, 65, 66. Um, the problem is, is that basically the marinas on the east coast, or well, north end of the east coast certainly, they couldn't fit a boat that size in. And I think very few marinas in the UK could. Um, you know, that's a boat designed pretty much for the med at that size. So I'm kind of limited. Um, at the moment we've got um, an S28, it's 20.8 feet, um, I think I need to be around 38 to 40 foot, maybe the 45 at most, um, something that gives me two good sized cabins, um, particularly fan of some, you know, head height, um, ideally with two bathrooms, uh, a day heads and a dedicated ensuite off what would be the master owner's cabin, um, and if nothing else, the ability to get a lot more people on board so uh, Sally Jane is rated for eight people I believe it is um, now I don't even know how many of you have actually ever been on S28 you put four or five people you know full-size adults and maybe a, a child or two and although you're not at the limit um, the boat is very crammed it's very difficult to move around people if you're at the front you know looking out over the windscreen and you want to go to the back and look out over the transom and uh, and watch the weight. 
it's very difficult to get around people and it makes it very difficult to social distance if you're wanting to do that as well. Um, so I think just having something with a bit more space and the two dedicated cabins will allow me to go away with, you know, take my friend and his kid and his missus away. Um, and we could actually go away for a weekend, which is something we couldn't do at the moment because obviously the front in, in the S28, the front of the cabin, um, it converts into a bed and it's normally a dining area. So having those distinct areas and a boat with the size of those distinct areas just to enable us to go away with more friends and more people, um, I think is, you know, kind of where I need to be at. Um, and there's loads of boats I've been looking at. There's no shortage of them. I've been looking at some of the old sea lines, the S41s, 42s, 43s and the 38s. Um, some of the smaller Princess V40s. Um, there's a lot of options. Um, I've set myself quite a, a, a cheap price range. We'll go into this, I'll do a video, you know, specifically to buy a new boat and we'll go and do some tours and stuff. Um, later on in, in the year, in next year. But um, yeah, so that's that's basically what I'm looking for in a boat. So um, that's my plan to, to upgrade Sally Jane to something else. Uh, name hasn't been decided. <laughs> so yeah. Um, my, th this isn't the video I was planning on making um, today. Um, I was hoping to show you a video of us going from Hull Marina to Grimsby, getting a berth in Grimsby and making it secure and everything. And um, a few people picked up on this on, you know, a little short that I post on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, you know, we're not 100% leaving Hull Marina um, at the moment. We are going to inspect Grimsby to see how we get on with it because it's a little bit of a different setup. So Hull Marina's commercial marina. Um, it's there just to make money for its owners. Uh, Grimsby is owned by the club, so they don't charge profit on most things. It is enough to cover costs and expenses and to have them maintain and develop a club. It's not um, ran to make, you know, 200% profit on a boat lift for argument's sake. Um, it swings and roundabouts, it has its advantages, it has its disadvantages, its disadvantages it's not in the middle of a big city, um, it's not in anywhere near the location that Hull Marina is, but it's cheaper and it's more coastal, so from Hull, if we want to go out into the North Sea, um, it's it's an hour's journey, even at the speed that SJ runs at, uh, out to Sperm Point and beyond, whereas at Grimsby, you are straight there and out, so an hour from Grimsby gets us to somewhere like Finley or Bridlington. So, um, yeah, we, we've got a lot more kind of coastal cruising options. And although Hull Marina is classed as coastal with it being salt water and down the estuary, um, you've still got a bit of running. So it makes it really difficult planning tides and everything. And invariably, if you're going anywhere, you have to drop anchor at some point and sit and wait for a tide window to come back to you because you've lost that hour from traveling up the estuary. Um, so yeah, so we're going to check out uh, Grimsby, see what that's like. Um, I'm also going to head over to Blackpool, to Fleetwood, to go and check out that one, um, and up into Hartlepool. Now, Hartlepool's great, because it's a, it's a very new, modern marina, really good facilities, um, and it's a big marina. So yeah, and it, it's it's on the east coast, the same as me. Um, the downside is it's quite a bit north. It, it changes from uh, the hour run that I currently have to get to Hull Marina up to, uh, I think, two to two and a half hours to get to Hartlepool from where I am. So it minimises the opportunity for us to just say, you know, ah, oh, it's four o'clock, let's, you know, weather looks good tonight, let's go out on the boat for an hour, which we do quite a lot. It was one of the priorities when I bought the boat that I wanted to be able to just use it, like, every day. Um, Hence Hull and Grimsby are good for us because they're both an hour away from where I live. Oh, an hour-ish, hour and a half maybe. Um, so going that little bit further away raises the immediate question in my head of, you know, why stick to the East Coast? Why not go somewhere nicer, different? The South Coast is a bit too far away. Um, you know, we're talking about a six-hour drive. Um, so again, that comes down to boat size. If you're going to go down on a six hour drive you want to be doing it for a weekend you're not going to be using it daily or just for little runs out um, so you want somewhere bigger to stop on with better facilities um, but my other thought was if I can go two and a half hours to Hartlepool where else can I get to in two and a half hours now uh, Fleetwood 
uh, just north of Blackpool um, popped up as an idea and a place I want to look at. Um, it's again, like Hartlepool, it's an old industrial town, an old fishing town that's um, seen better days, but is starting to you know renovate itself back up and the marina looks lovely, um, very near to uh, one of their big shopping centres. So it's got facilities, um, it's about two and a half hours drive away. What appeals to me about Fleetwood um, is that you are within very short cruising distance of uh, Isle of Man. You can jump straight over to there. You go down the south coast towards Liverpool and Wales into Conway and uh, into northern Wales and then you know down the coast of Wales. It's it's quite a there's quite a lot of really good places to go. Go heading south. If you head up north, you've got uh, up in Scotland and the locks, and you can actually pick up the Caledonian up that way. Um, and interesting enough, one of its more um, one of its more interesting aspects is that you can actually get over to Northern Ireland and then you could coast up down Ireland, down to Dublin if you wanted to. So that's quite um, that's quite an interesting prospect. Now, said all of that, that too requires a bigger boat. So um, so yes, yeah, so that's not an immediate option. That's a, maybe towards the end of the year or next year um, if we do buy a bigger boat. Um, so yeah, so that's some of the things that we're going to be uh, looking at in next year and I'll go through with you guys and probably more detailed videos on. Um, there are a few more upgrades coming to uh, SJ. The, um, the seats, as you guys are aware, I've ripped them all out there now with the trimmers. They're hopefully going to be back in January time, so we'll get all the new seats in. Um, I've just taken delivery, finally, of, um, well, I originally ordered a Sivimad chart plotter, but it's... Uh, Getting stock of Simad is just impossible. Um, so I've got a Raymarine Axiom. Um, it's either seven or nine, I can't actually remember, inch chart plotter. So I've got that now. Uh, I've got the starter NEMA 2000 backbone kit, so we can hook it up to the Fusion, um, Fusion radio as well. A um, few other things I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy a Class AB um, AIS transponder, so we can send and receive. Uh, AIS. Um, I don't want to buy the Raymarine one because that's about £900 but there's um, a couple of other companies that make these that plug into the NEMA 2000 network and make their data available across NEMA 2000 which was the whole point of going with NEMA 2000 rather than Raymarine's proprietary CTALK or CTALK NG I think it is network because I wanted to be able to plug in devices from other manufacturers so, um, so yeah, I'll be looking at getting AAS on board. Um, I'm umming and ahhing on radar. I don't think it's worth it because radar is useful, but because I'm only really planning on having the boat for another year, I think radar's not really much point. Um, what I will probably do, though, is I'll probably up, up, uh, update the VHF radio. So at the moment we have um, a radio that looks like a car stereo brick with a wired mic coming off of it. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a black box radio in where the, the actual gubbins of the radio sits somewhere inside the boat. It's connected to the network backbone and uh, all we have is just a handset and a speaker up on the actual dash. Um, now the reason for that is that where my current radio sits, if you remember that you've got SJ's dash, um, the current radio sits where I want to put the chart plotter basically. So, um, so yeah, so there's going to be a few more upgrades. Um, I think because it, it's going to involve a lot of ripping the wiring out, which will make the boat kind of unusable to, to redo a lot of this wiring and take the entire dash console out. I don't want to be spending weeks and weeks and weeks doing it and not be able to use the boat. So I think what I'm going to probably do is get a, you know an electrician in to actually come and do it, someone who knows what we're doing, that's done this before, got experience of doing it before, they'll probably smash it out in one or two days, whereas for me, as much fun as it would be to do it, um, it will probably take me two or three months. <laughs> um, you know, time allowances and trying to work my way around things. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm up in the air about that, but I'll, once I've got all the equipment, I'll, um, I'll decide. I mean, yeah, I, um, I do hope to uh, do some more boating videos where we're actually going away and things. So, so that's kind of my plans for next year as well. Um, there's a few other plans that I would like to once um, once we finish retrimming SJ and there's actually seats. Um, and I mentioned this when I first started about bringing you guys out. Um, 
but yeah, once receipts are in there and you know restrictions have lifted a little bit and now it's vaccines and everything and all that kind of stuff, so we don't have issues with you know social mixing. Um, yeah, I, I will be inviting a few of you guys out to come and join us on um, you know on, on SJ for the day, and we'll uh, we'll take you out for a few hours of run. Um, depending on what you want to do and what the weather's like, we'll go out and we'll have a meal or something, or we'll just go and mess around on the water, or we can even go and just go fishing from the back of it. Um, depends what you want out of it and what the weather and the tides are doing on the on the assigned day. Um, so yeah, so. So there'll be interesting things coming hopefully in the next year. Um, and I'm hoping my time will free up a little bit towards kind of April and then, you know, particularly over the summer months, um, I'll have much more time to get more content created because I've really struggled the last few months for you guys. So, um, so yeah, um, apart from that, it's been really nice meeting you all as I've walked around marinas, both Hull and other marinas. Um, I've actually been surprised, considering that, you know, in the scheme of things, there's only 500 and odd, view, uh, you know, subscribers to his channel, obviously a lot more watching, but um, only 500 odd subscribers. The number of people that have um, stopped me in the streets and just said, hi, are you Dave? And went on and started talking to me. I'm like, this is awesome. This is, you know, quite cool. And it, it's amazing, even people that don't own boats, um, a lot of you are very enthusiastic and so really knowledgeable, even if you can't afford and don't own a boat, but you've taken the time to, you know, learn about not just my boat, but other people's boats as well. And uh, that's been absolutely fascinating for me, meeting some of you guys. And uh, yeah, I do look forward to more of that. Um, there's uh, another guy that uh, is on our marina, on Hull Marina. Uh, lives just around the corner from me, actually, funnily enough. Um, but I spoke to him a few times and he was, after watching the last episode on the exhaust problems, he was very kind to leave me a note with um, a proper exhaust clamp. Because um, I don't know if you remember in the video if you watched it. I, I used a Jubilee clip because we didn't have anything better. Um, and he actually had a spare proper exhaust clamp. So he's left me an exhaust clamp and some exhaust paste. Um, so when I went to SJ the other evening, it was like, yeah, that's cool. He'd left me a note and everything. So at some point, I will use that and I will fix that exhaust and then I'll get, get the uh, excess paste back to you. Um, but you know, that it's just cool. And I think that's a good view on the boating community in general. Most people seem you know, really helpful, really nice. And if they see other people struggling or if they see people not doing stuff in a safe way or whatever, they'll come and talk to you and offer advice and help. And quite often jump in and actually, you know, hands on, on it themselves. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's been nice, which kind of leads me into the, uh, the the last section of this video. Um, I'm going to try and keep it short. Uh, but there's a quite a, a common theme for uh, questions that most people seem to have asked, both in the video comments um, and in real life. Um, so I thought I'd cover. I've got. I actually wrote a few down. Um, so I wouldn't forget what they were, and there's like six or seven, so we'll try and blitz through them. Uh, the most common question is, why boating? Why a boat? Um, it's a damn good question. Uh, I'm quite impulsive. Uh, I've been known to make decisions on the spur of the moment. I've always been fascinated by boats, particularly big motor boats and uh, stuff like that. Whenever you've gone places, you see all these lovely uh, motor yachts and people going fishing. I'm a big fisherman, so... You know, I've always been interested in boats, but I always thought for years that, you know, oh, you've got to be a rich person to uh, buy a boat. And a few years ago, we went to America. I got pissed off with customs and flying, as you do. Uh, I thought, fuck it, I'm going to buy a boat. Just impulse, pure impulse. I'm going to buy a boat that way. I don't ever have to go deal with customs like this again. Um, to, to which point everyone said, well, why don't you just buy a caravan? I don't fancy towing a caravan all the way across Europe, but spending three months coast hopping through all the lovely coastal towns on a boat sounds awesome. Um, you know, typically boats are much bigger than caravans as well. Um, so yeah, so I thought I'd just buy a boat. And yeah, that's it. So I suppose the answer to why boating is why not, you know? Um, turns out that it's not a rich person's hobby as such. 
If you're sensible with how you uh, plan your journeys and your equipment purchases, you're a bit handy and able to do stuff yourself. And you take your time buying your first boat. Don't just buy the first boat you see. Do some research, find out what you want, find out common faults with the engines that you see, common faults with the hulls that you see. Some hulls have uh, horrible handling properties in sea but are great on rivers, you know. Make sure you find the right boat for what you're going to do. I, I've spent, I think, eight, eight or nine months from starting to actually buying a boat, um, which leads nicely on to the next question. Why a Sea Line S28? Why not any other 28, 30 footer? Um, you know, there's things like Sea Rays and Dorals and Crown Lines in that size. Um, Galleon, do the little Gallia range. Um, there's quite a lot of boats. Uh, I think Geno, is it? Or, um, do the Leader range or the NC range, and they do a, a, a sub 30 footer as well. Um, the S28, when I was looking at boats, I, I, I was seriously looking at um, a Sea Ray, I think it was. It might have been the Crown Line, one of the American ones that doesn't have side decks. Um, and there was a few things about the S28 in comparison that I liked. So the American ones have no side decks. Typically, it gives them a wider kind of cockpit area for more entertaining hosting. Um, something I don't like, never have liked, is that kind of through windscreen uh, door to get, to get access to the bow area. Uh, never liked it. Don't think it looks very good. Again, personal preference. I, I was adamant I didn't want a boat with that. So that kind of ruled most of the smaller American boats out. Which left me looking at, you know, what can we get at the European end? Um, turns out not massive amounts, in all fairness. Um, but I, I, I kind of saw, I went to Burton Waters in Lincoln, um, mostly because that's the closest, you know, kind of marina sales place to me. Um, so I, I went there and uh, had a look, and they had an S28 in, and for its size, it crams an awful lot in. Um, now, I'd heard the phrase before, buy the biggest boat you can afford, and I didn't do that. Um, I bought the boat that I thought had the features that I wanted, and the size for the boating that I envisaged me wanting to do. Um, in kind of hindsight, the kind of boating that I actually want to do needs a bigger boat because it is using it more to go away and being able to take friends away, not just go out on day trips. And whilst I do love just using SJ in an evening if we want to go out for for an hour or two or whatever, I, I really enjoy that. That's actually not the boating that I really want to do. What I really want to do is say, all oh, right, let's go to you know Edinburgh for the weekend and go up Friday night, be there early hours of Saturday morning, have Saturday, Sunday, come back Sunday evening. Um, you know, and yes, I could do that on a train, I could drive up there, get a hotel, but the thought of having the boat is kind of cool, not because not only is it my own little private place that's got everything I wanted, it's better equipped than a hotel. Um, but you know, if we want to stop off at say Scarborough, Whitby on the way, we can do, whereas in a the car, there's quite a detour to do that, whereas on a boat. Well, you're just driving past and you could go and have, you know, lunch in Scarborough and then continue your journey up if you wanted. So, yeah, it's the S28 is a great boat. It handles amazing. It's really fast for its size, considering it's got a couple of diesel engines. It's surprisingly efficient and economical to run. It's not cost me hundreds of thousands to run it. Um, it's not cost me hundreds of thousands to maintain it either. It is very cheap in, in the scheme of things. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, it, it fitted what I, in my head was the boat that I wanted. Not necessarily the boat that I want now. I've got some experience and understand boating as a kind of a hobby more. Um, I think in an ideal world, if I had infinite pots of money, I would have something in the kind of 50 to 55 foot range. Um, Sunseeker, Princess, V55, Sunseeker, Predator, 55 Evo, that kind of thing. And I would have something more smaller, maybe uh, like an Axopar, uh, 37 cross cabin, something like that, but 
obviously we'd have to be able to get diesel engines on it. We don't have petrol anywhere on the East Coast. There's literally no petrol from Lowestoft all the way up to Edinburgh. It's only diesel. Um, so yeah, it would, it'd have to be swapped to uh, diesel outboards, which is obviously a sticking point, but in the ideal world, that would be it. It would have something big that we could go away on for long journeys and for weekends and, uh, and go further afield. And then something small that I could keep local, but we could just use for the pop out for an hour. And, and go and boot it type thing um so yeah so but we'll see you know i don't have that kind of money available to me at the moment um so i think jumping up to somewhere close to 40 foot um yeah will be put me in the sweet spot for now um and for my plans uh next question why hull um It's interesting that I don't really have a proper answer for it. So I bought the boat and I was on waiting lists for Ghoul, Viking Marine at Ghoul, um, and the HC8 Grimsby. And the boat sale all went through and I was still on the waiting list but was still looking like it was going to be months to clear. So I needed someone to put this boat rapidly. Otherwise it would have been stuck down in Ipswich, which is where it comes from, or came from. Um, but I was adamant I wanted it to be close. I wanted it to be somewhere that I could use it, um, as I said earlier. So I started ringing around and I just, uh, well, I didn't ring, I emailed Hull Marine. I said, look, is there any chance you've got a berth? And uh, a lass called Kelly uh, emailed me back pretty quickly saying, yeah, we can fit you in, no problem. Um, when's it coming? Um, tomorrow. Um, oh, yeah, 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 that's not a problem. We'll just, we'll put it in a berth for you and then we'll move it somewhere when you first come down and we'll work out where it's going. And then lockdown hit in 2020 and I didn't get back down to the boat until July. In the meantime, the marina had secured it, made, made it safe, um, put it in a berth. Turned out to be the berth that I'm still in now. Um, it was a perfect fit, so we left it. Um, so yeah, so Hull Marina was purely, a, they were the only place that could fit me in and met my requirements of being close enough to home. Um, I mean, I'd been looking at, as I say, all kinds of places. Um, kind of glad that I did pick Hull because for a point of view from learning the basics, having access to more than just standard rivers, but not quite the full, you know, angriness of that is the North Sea. Um, it's been very good from a learning point of view. It's given me the opportunity in a, in a fairly safe and well-controlled environment, learn how the water and how the boat behaves. Um, and the staff are great. Um, can't say much for the management, but the staff are great. Um, so yeah, so that, that's why Hull. Um, and that's most often question. This is weird, this one, because I thought, you know, I cover most things in videos anyway. Um, but have you been anywhere? Well, no, <laughs> is, is the short answer. Um, obviously in 2020, most harbours didn't let you go anywhere. They were not taking in visitors. Um, there was massive restrictions, those didn't lift until quite late into the 2020, kind of November, December time. Um, obviously, you, you don't really want to be going away in winter. Uh, it came to this year and we had some big plans. We thought, oh, we'll get down to Wells and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go up to Scarborough and Whitby and everything. And even to the point that bank holiday weekend in August, um, I actually booked a day off work to make it four day weekend. The plan was we were going to go to Scarborough for the weekend go up on the Friday, have Saturday, Sunday there, come back on the Monday. Um, this year's weather has been absolutely shit. It's been terrible. I mean, it's rained for like nine months non-stop. Um, so, and gale force winds, I mean, even now looking at the, the weather app, 50 mile an hour winds on Christmas day, it's just been ridiculous. So since June or July or certainly early August, um, I think we've only used the boat like twice or maybe three times because the weather's been that bad, but it's been beyond the rating of the boat, let alone beyond my capability. Um, so yeah, our plans to go away on August Bank Holiday weekend got absolutely shafted because um, it was blowing a gale and absolutely having it down. It was storm, whatever it was. We named these things now were that bad. So um, yeah, the weather unfortunately in, impacts you on boating quite a lot and uh, yeah in this case I, I was scuppered all my plans have been scuppered by weather and then 
later on in the year where there was a couple of you know days between the storms because there's been two named storms there's a couple of days between them and i thought i could go away work picked up and i've not had a chance so we've not really been any further than sperm point you know we've been out to to kind of spurn a few times and uh messed around out there and come back and we, we've gone down to the other side of the bridge and messed around. But we've not actually gone anywhere. I mean, uh, when we do take the boat to Grimsby, it'll be the first time that I've actually birthed it in a foreign harbour, so to speak, um, because we've never been able to go anywhere else. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be in interesting. Um, so, yeah. Um, next question. Dream locations and destinations. So if I could go anywhere, where would I want to go? So there's two places, or two, not places, two things I really want to do. Um, I would love to go um, and do the East Coast Loop in America. So it um, starts in Florida, goes, is it Fort Lauderdale? Uh, Lauderdale, don't, don't actually know how you pronounce that, sorry. Um, you go all the way up, um, up to, I believe, New York, up the Hudson, into the Great Lakes, and then down and come out, I want to say somewhere like Tennessee, maybe, or something like that. I don't know the full route. Um, there's, um, there's a guy being documented it, documenting it on um, Motorboat and Yachting magazine, and it's fascinated me, and it's, it looks amazing. So, yeah, I would love to do that. Um, I'd love to go up to the Swedish uh, archipelago. Um, there's a guy on the Sea Line forums. Um, he's got a little SC29. And I tell you what, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks absolutely amazing. And maybe do the Norwegian fjords on the same, same route um, at the same time. Yeah, it looks absolutely stunning. Now, whether I ever get a chance to take my own boat up there or not is a different story but um yeah it looks amazing uh the final thing i want to do is i want to go around the med and all the way down probably as far as greece um and i want to do it from the uk so i want to start in the uk i'm going to go down the coast of the uk cross over around the coast of uh france down port, around portugal round the bay of biscay not across it so port hop around round portugal um all the way down around Spain, Gibraltar, um, up to Spain. My mum lives in Spain, not far from Alicante, um, so call and see her. Um, continue around, go to Corsica, Sardinia, uh, back up France. Mrs. really wants to go to Monaco, so um, yeah, maybe a, 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 a one day overnight in Monaco and uh, do it as one of those bucket list type things, because let's face it, I'm not going to be able to afford to do it twice. Um, and then around Italy, um, so my family is mostly from Venice, um, so I want to make it all the way around to Venice, which is on the northeast coast of Italy, so you've got to go all the way around it conveniently, all the way back up. And since I'm there, well, I'm very near, near to Croatia, so I may as well go to Croatia and around the archipelago there, because again, uh, I don't know if you, you guys look at the Super Yacht Captain uh, YouTube channel, some of uh, some of his videos when we took AWOL around there, yeah. Uh, it looks amazing. So again, I would love to take my own boat and then continue down and round to Greece uh, and then come back. I'd also like to go over to Morocco. Um, just, I've been to Morocco once. I loved it. i quite like to do it again. Uh, and the thought of doing it in my own boat sounds kind of cool. For some reason in my head, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever watched, you know, like an old, uh, I would say like Clark Gable style films where they, they have the gentleman cruisers paddle steamers and they're going around um, Greece, what was Greece and, or what is now Greece and Turkey, um, stuff like that, uh, uh, and you know, there's always a, a lady in a white dress and a sun hat or something, and there's always a murder mystery or something like that, I, I love the thought of that, and actually the thought of buying like an old 1950s, 1960s kind of uh, passion, passenger style yacht type thing is um, absolutely amazing, actually, if you look on... Um, I think it's boats.co.uk, they've just sold a whole expedition yacht from the 60s. That kind of looks cool to me. So yeah, the thought of doing something like that and going uh, round there, um, it's just in my head, it sounds amazing. I'd be like Indiana Jones, um, so it'd be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, um, next question. How did you learn all of this? And I wouldn't dare doing it myself. Um, 
I'll make it up as I go along in case you haven't worked that out. Uh, I know cars quite well, I know engines quite well. Um, I think the earliest car I can remember rebuilding, I was probably eight, and I helped the next door neighbour, um, as, as you know, kids do, uh, rebuild an old Singer, uh, which was a, a steel frame, uh, a coat spring suspension, and it's balsa and plywood bodies on them. And I remember because I was so small and I had small, you know, quite long arms, uh, he, he used to use me for passing wires and uh, bits of hose and pipe around and through the bodywork and steel chassis. So, uh, so yeah, that's the earliest one I remember. But since then, you know, I, I've done several uh, classic cars. I do my own cars. I've got a thousand horsepower Mustang sat on the driver. I built the engine myself, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm quite good with engines and quite good with cars. Uh, translating that to boats, well, the diesel engines, but an engine is an engine. They work on the same principles, they're very basic. Um, the things I've had to learn for boats is stuff like the freshwater, seawater cooling systems, uh, stuff like that that cars don't have. Um, and then most of it has been working out stuff like the electrics and how boats actually work, you know. Um, things like what the hell's a bilge and bilge pumps, why it's important to doing this, why you know, you've got to put uh, loops in or non-return valves if it's below water level and uh, those kind of things. Um, so yeah, it's been, a, it's been a learning curve, but if you're technically, you know, quite handy yourself and, and quite good, I would encourage you to have a go. It's not as difficult as it sounds and things like the Sea Line Forums for me have been invaluable because people know these boats really well, know the engines really well, have helped me. Uh, when I've had a problem, I go and ask and they'll give me ideas and suggestions. Sometimes, you know, they're on the money, other times they're not, but they've helped me think slightly differently or helped me look at a specific area. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's not that difficult if you're willing to have a go and usually, as long as you take some step by step, follow guides, follow workshop manuals, and you know, you know the difference between tightening and loosening off a, a nut, you'll be fine. So have, have a bash, ask around. Most people will be very helpful, show you, tell you, talk you through it, give you instructions, etc. Um, the boat community is great, so if you do get into boating, you know, really do ask around, get involved. Um, yeah, it will help a lot. <laughs> the, other one, the, the, the final question now, um, and it's less a question, more of a statement that I've heard a few people say, you sh should start a company doing this. <laughs> um, I have a full-time job. Um, it keeps me very busy. <laughs> um, we are, well, we as a company have, uh, uh, have grown quite rapidly over the past year. We, we, we're now up to like 120 members of staff, whereas two, three years ago we were at 40. So we, we've grown quite rapidly and that has put a lot of pressure and demand on me um, which is why obviously I've been really busy recently um, and not been not been out or being able to make as many videos as I would have liked so I just simply haven't had time or it's been getting to weekends and I've just wanted to sleep so the last thing on my mind right now is starting a company to do <laughs> to do anything else certainly a lot of stuff as you guys have seen me do it's me making shit up as I go along. It's not me doing work that I would consider good enough to warranty for, for other people. Um, if I was going to do that, you know, obviously that's a whole different ball game. I would actually have to start planning and documenting stuff and security testing and checking and all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't dream about just randomly pulling hoses off if I didn't know what they were doing for someone else's boat, you know. Um, whereas on mine, I'll pull the hose off and check what's in it to, to let me know if it's a water feed, a fresh water feed or a fuel feed or whatever. Um, you know, um, so yeah, it, it's, yeah, starting a company is not really, um, not, not really something I, I want to be doing. Um, but that's it. That, that's kind of the most common questions. This has been a very long video, so I do apologise. <laughs> I can ramble. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed 2021. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're still watching the video now, I salute you. You have uh, got a lot more patience than me, probably. Uh, I hope you continue to follow us in 2022. And hopefully things will get more interesting as we uh, start the next round of upgrades and start the uh, purchase cycle for the new boat. And uh, I'll take you guys all along with me. And uh, yeah, so apart from that, Enjoy what's left of 2021. Have a good holiday. Um, stay safe. And I will see you all probably in 2022.
Happy Christmas. Good New Year. See you later.